And there is a thousand ways out here for us to get to the bag. Like, we know that we can. Like, I know I'm a hustler. I know I can get it. And I do that shit every day. But it's all about how you go about it. Yeah. You don't want to lose yourself in the process of getting to the bag. And that's one thing that I, I, I give shouts out and kudos to, like, my upbringing, my pops, my grandfather, my dad. Man, pops, he, like, he, he put that in me. Mm-hmm. You know, value integrity. Value your word. Value um, people. Yep. you know more than just that dollar bill like i do not want to burn bridges mm-hmm. i that that was one of the major learning lessons for me is that i'm not willing to burn bridges just to chase the bag i i don't think i'd be able to sleep well at night yeah and that's that's just me and it may take us a little bit longer to get to the bad like compared to how other people are getting to the bag but once we find our sweet spot because long as it, long as we're being who we are in that process, we stand true to self. We're gonna figure out what works for us, and it's coming. It may just take us a little bit longer, but we're getting there. Without black, there cannot be anything else. Welcome back to another edition of the Black and Abundant Podcast, where we are your amazing host. Let me start off by introducing my beautiful fiance, my queen, my goddess, by Nia Love, at by Nia Love, call him Nia Love. Well, they call you Nia Love. I'm sorry, baby. <laughs> Introduce yourself on. Go ahead. Do it. Do it. Do it. Hurry up. I might as well have done the introduction <laughs> myself. Hey, look, I'm getting better at it, but look, I got to come in with that fire, that energy, because I'm so excited to be back. But yeah, tell them who you are, baby. I mean, you said it. I'm Nia Love. That's it. Period. That's Y'all know who she is. No. Okay, cool, cool. Um. Jamal, aka J. Scotty, producer. Don't laugh at my intros. Oh my it's, God. it's raw, it's real. You know what I'm saying? I it know, is what it is. but like, there's like a, a, a specified intro that we do. <sighs> okay. But it's okay. Okay. I want well, you to do your best. We are the Black and Abundant Podcast where we talk we all are. things Black Abundance and how we can elevate our people in every area of their lives. We are your hosts. I am Nia and this is Jamal. What up, family? Nice, <laughs> nice to meet y'all once again. Glad to be back. Y'all see that amazing smile? Yeah, that was all planned in my mind because my oh. goal here is to keep her smiling. You feel oh. me? And I did a great job. I did, huh? Okay. But anyway, um, welcome back. Welcome back. We are back like we never left. We have been missing for a long time, yes, but you see the reason why. You see this amazing setup that we got going on, the mm. lights. We painted the wall black. We got a bunch of nice little things, little trinkets and stuff on the mm-hmm. table. We decided to go table style. It's a whole vibe. We like this so much better, mm-hmm. honestly. I like table style. Me too. Instead of sitting in the chairs. I'm chilling. Yeah. And then the quality of the camera is just so much better. It's just everything yeah. better. Everything better. And that's a whole lesson in it, y'all. Like, y'all are literally watching us grow and elevate. Mm-hmm. We are, a, a value of ours is to do it ugly, start with where you at, with who you are, with what you have. Just get started but, and continue to refine yourself through that process. You know, don't waste time trying to be perfect because perfectionism is the true enemy here. Right. We just making progress. Y'all see the progress and it's, and it's always going to be room for improvement. But it's beauty in that journey, in that process. Do it ugly. Do it ugly. It doesn't have to be perfect for you to start. I mean, you saw we had the the wallpaper up mm-hmm. the first time, and <laughs> that was so much. Wallpaper. Yeah, that that wallpaper was so gross. Ooh, was thinking, but back then, he was thinking like, ooh, like, like, this we got the wall. Be, yeah, ooh, ooh, this is so, spent so much money on that damn wallpaper. And we just tried to take it off the wall. We didn't rip the wall rip off. The walls. There's still a piece of wallpaper up yeah. there. We had to switch walls. Yeah, so. and then we was thinking like, dang, why well, just we didn't start with that wall in the first place? Right. right. But I'm glad we didn't because we right. have options. And then so. we had the white wall and apparently that messes with the light contrast just for the people who are looking to start a podcast or know anything about lighting and stuff like that Mm -hmm. the white versus the red versus our dark skin it was Mm -hmm. just too much contrast and the camera couldn't keep up yeah so now all black everything all black everything all black everything now there's not any confusion on the camera's part and and any confusion with the lighting and it looks solid yeah it it looks solid it looks solid a lot better and it's going to get better and better so Shouts out to us. We got to give a hand clap for us for just doing it ugly. Yeah. And we want to make sure that we are not only setting the example of being an inspiration to you guys, is 
Like what we doing, y'all can do that shit too. Mm-hmm. Like just get started. That's the mission. Well, what you have, just go. So right. before we dive into it, I want to start the episode by acknowledging a couple of things. We, can, we could do it on the back end, but I don't want to do it on the front end. Let's take the time to acknowledge some improvements, some new milestones we've reached since we've been off the camera because we've been busting our ass day mm-hmm. in and day, day out. So what's obvious on camera right now? It's a little physical thing over there in that corner, and it says, let me give y'all a hint, it says, how to move on, how to move on in 30 days. You are, baby, you are a new author. I am. Hand clap. You are an author. Okay. Yeah. Nah, come on. I know, baby. Energy, give me that. That's a huge milestone, baby. I am. Look, I'm going to be real with y'all, and this is just real, raw, To all of my artists, to all of my creators, to all of my entrepreneurs, like anybody who's doing something where you're putting something out there for people to see and to purchase and to believe in you and Mm -hmm. trust in you. If that's you, then you got to feel my like, I wouldn't necessarily say frustration. When you know that you got a bomb ass product and you just want other people to see it, like, y'all, this book is fire. I'm not going to lie to you. This book is fire. I've poured all of my wisdom, all of my knowledge that I've collected over my own self-love, personal growth, personal development journey. And I structured it in a 30-day plan Mm. where it breaks down everything for you. It teaches you how to think, not what to think, but how to think so that you can create your, your own decisions and your own reality based off of what you truly desire wow it's an amazing ass book for sure i'm not gonna lie to you it is Mm -hmm. however as an artist sometimes you make some amazing ass work that you pour tens of thousands of hours into and then you put it out there and nobody buys it Mm. let's talk about that and as much as you believe in yourself and as much as you believe in your product, you look at the numbers and you're like, well, shit. And it's not a lack of confidence in self because I know that this book is fire. Now I know that everyone wants to read this book. Y'all, I gave away this book for free to about 20 people and the reviews, the responses, amazing. Someone was literally messaging me today about how I need to turn it into an audio book. Mm. Like, fire fire reviews so i don't know why y'all ain't buying that shit because y'all need it y'all need it and maybe i need to do a better part of just communicating how much you need it maybe i need to do a better part of marketing myself which i am in the process of doing but to the people out there who are like me and in that position just know i'm here with your ass like this this shit this shit can be discouraging at times, but don't mm-hmm. allow yourself to give up. Because now that I've created this book, I can sell this for the rest of the my rest of life. life. Yep. I never have to write it again. So if y'all don't want to buy it in this season, y'all going to buy it next season. And if y'all don't buy it next season, y'all can buy it the next season. Y'all can buy it when I'm 50. I don't care. Whenever it pops off is when it pops off. Mm. But at least it's created. Mm. at least it's done and a lot of people can't say that they did that wow for facts and you can take that man that's that's huge like people don't even reach that type of accomplishment in their lifetime create creating something once and getting and getting paid on it forever yeah and that's a whole mindset shift in, in itself and i feel like we should take the time to unpackage um, that is like that's the that's the wave that we're on and to, to kind of backtrack to we were just talking about like nobody's buying it right now we definitely get my question to you is how can we take more ownership of that because you did the first part you did the hard part which is you you had something in your mind you created something that came up here you took all of your collection of experiences and you know for a fact that it's hardcore as far as it's going to impact millions of lives and you put it into a book like that's the first thing, but of course there's more work to be done. So there is another level of um, there is another level of skill set that 
we need to learn there's another level and it's going to always be like that which is well we can't expect because we created something and like it's just going to be people just going to be all on it Woo, yeah and we got to ask ourselves like damn why nobody messing with my stuff right and the answer is through the question right we always say that you find that you have to question your way to the answer so the next level that we have to get better at in our journey of entrepreneurship is what we're creating now is marketing ourselves and how we market it. Yeah. I didn't see that part when I was at the beginning stages of my entrepreneurial journey. I just wanted to get started. I wanted to create something. And let's not, not, let's not forget about you, you know, mastering it on and on the skill of finishing what you start moving at. I know this one that move, this move, little buddy, but you can say that you finish what you start. Right. Let's not knock that too as well. So now the next level in our journey is how to market ourselves, and that's a whole world in itself. So that's our next level. So let's talk about the marketing piece that's important because entrepreneurs who's you're out there, you got to consider that as well. I mean, that's what we're in the process of learning and the process of doing. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, it's not public yet, but I have started to create a marketing business called Love Marketing Group. I am doing so with my best friend and sister-in-law, Kimaya. Shout out What up, sis? And then also we have hired our first two employees. So shout out to Sarah and Lori. They have been absolutely amazing and they've made this journey so much easier. And I'm learning a lot from them because Mm. I've only ever marketed my own. So... I'm limited because I've never tried to market anybody else's things. Therefore, there are some key things that I might be missing. Like Sarah was talking to me last night about something that I was missing, which is just external engagement. So going on my competitors posts Mm -hmm. and making sure I'm engaging that way. I didn't even think about that. I feel like I do so naturally, but intentionally taking time out of every day to go engage on my competitors posts i didn't that didn't make sense to me why is that important because it shows that you are a player in the field like when people you're accessing their followers people who are looking under their posts and you say something of value of meaning Mm. like okay you know ace metaphor maybe maybe but um he's like a relationships guy Mm -hmm. um has like tonight's conversations and stuff like that um i see him like as he's in my field he's a competitor type so i was going through his post the other day and there were some things that he said some very controversial things that i didn't necessarily agree with and in my mind i didn't respond but even though i wanted to respond i didn't respond but after hearing her say that i recognized how me responding under his post disagreeing with him and saying why would draw people to my comment Because what do we do when we watch a post and we don't agree with it? We be like, oh, what the comments say? Yeah, go right straight to the comments. So if I'm making myself known in the comments, Mm -hmm. then people might go check out my page. page. So she was saying like 30 minutes before you post, go engage under somebody else's post. Wow. Right. That's brilliant. I would have never thought of that. And that's just a little gem that I'm sprinkling and that I'm I'm learning. And so, okay, let's let's refresh for a second. The topic for today, (laughs) the topic for today is lessons that we learned in 2022, things that we're going to take into 2023, this concept of new year, new you, whatever. What's the theme of 2023? Mm -hmm. So taking that back, that's what I call a side note, babe. Okay. He didn't know what a side note was. I didn't know what was. a side note. We was in the shower. I was like, babe, what is what is a side note? Like, is what I'm about to say a side note? But you're like, nah, this is a, a another topic. topic. You're saying to change the topic on, on another note or something like that. On another topic, yeah, whatever. Okay. He completely changed the topic and called that a side note. I'm like, no, a side note means you go aside, but then you come back. Gotcha. So I was talking about. Yes. Okay. So what I learned from that experience with Sarah teaching me about that is that you don't have to know everything Bar. to start a business. You don't have to know everything to start a business. You don't have to know everything to hire employees. 
because I don't know everything. And my, my goal isn't to know everything. My goal is to hire somebody who knows more than me about a very specific thing so that I can utilize their skill set, their experience, their knowledge to benefit the business as a whole. Mm, talk about it. So that was a major lesson that I learned at the end of 2022 that I'm carrying into 2023 because we thought that we have to know everything about our business. We have to run everything in our business. We have to be the business and be the the salesperson, the freaking social media manager, the video editor. We got to be everything. But no, I just people see me as somebody who's good at marketing. I don't know why, but it's something that I, I guess I naturally have been doing by running my social media. I, I've been a so social media manager because I've been managing my own. Mm -hmm. So I always have people come to me as, as, as if I'm an authority in this space. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, why not take advantage of that and just turn it into a whole business? But even though I know nothing about social media management on like a professional level, now I have Kimaya who's working for a marketing agency. I have Sarah who has social media management experience. And I have Lori who knows how to do some fire video edits. So I can use them to help elevate me and elevate the business. Mm -hmm. Family, do not miss that bar. That is a whole gem right there. That was one of the major takeaways, lessons that we learned in 2022 on our journey of entrepreneurship. The goal is not to be the best at everything. The goal here is to learn how to leverage other people's skill set mm -hmm. that's in alignment with the goal that you are looking to accomplish for yourself. Leveraging other people is the name of the game. Well, leveraging, period, because we can take leveraging, you know, from different ways, you know, from a credit perspective, from a building a business perspective. But in this sense, what you learn is that leveraging other people yeah that's that's the goal because we are we are currently building businesses we are the goal here is to build a big business and the goal here is to not we we don't desire to be business owner that's con always working on the business just always just working 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 our goal is to fire ourselves as soon as possible but how do you do so you have to put people in place mm -hmm. and it's teaching me a lot about leadership as well mm. like how they perform and what they do, what they do know and what they don't know is a reflection of me as their leader. So instead of blaming them, being quick to blame them for mistakes, I have to step outside of myself and say, OK, how can I communicate this better? How can I put in work on the front end as a learning lesson for them so that they can take that experience of watching me do it and following my example, following my lead and apply it to themselves? Mm. So it's also teaching me a lot about stepping outside of myself and being being a leader. And I've learned I've learned quite a bit about that. Do you have an example of that? I don't necessarily want to give an example about that because I feel like that's dipping into my personal business affairs. Gotcha. I understand. But just know that there will be times when you have to coach your employees through certain things. And you, sometimes you might have to do the job in order to show somebody else how to do it. Mm -hmm. So as a leader, you can't point fingers. If they don't know how to do it, it's, it's your fault, mm. not theirs. That's a huge bar. Yeah. And the growth has been real. Like you started your LLC. Last year. In like, like March. March. Yeah. And you ended the year, the calendar year, hiring two people. But there's been so much ups and downs in that journey. Like, you didn't start the year off thinking that you was going to start a marketing firm. Like oh, a marketing no, I didn't. Business. Like, I didn't know I was going to start a marketing business until, like, November. Yeah. <laughs> and then I hired people in December. December. Like, we've been moving fast. Yeah. But now we have clarity on what we are doing and where we're desiring to go, what we're building. But to be real, in 2022, we spent a lot of that time just yeah. doing stuff. And yeah. sometimes it is going to be like that until you figure out what you want. And some most of the time on that journey is that when to get to what it is that you want to do and getting clarity, you kind of have to get figure out like what you don't want to do. And it's, it's those experiences that makes you aware. Yeah. So that was another lesson, too. Sometimes the answer is on the other side of the experience. And let's let's dive into that, because we had a conversation earlier today just about 
our finances and what we're doing moving forward regarding that because the year financially the year did not go how we planned it Mm -hmm. but you know we're still here we survived what seven months seven we survived seven months of being full-time entrepreneurs Mm -hmm. seven months that's that's a huge accomplishment it is and i don't want to overlook that and one thing that jamal he's been transparent with me about our finances is that we spent a good 60 60 k last year Mm -hmm. solely on investments Mm -hmm. solely on hiring or not hiring but adopting this mentor and flying here hotel here conference here like event over here like we invested so much into knowledge and into mentorship and it took us a long time to get to a mentor that we've wanted to run with Mm -hmm. and each mentor taught us something something. different Mm -hmm. and taught us something new that led us to where we finally wanted to go like we started the year wanting to go into car rentals Mm -hmm. and we got in the room with so many valuable people so i love that experience that was one of our biggest investments but i absolutely love that experience even though we decided not to go the car rental route even though we do have some cars out on Toro right now and one up in nashville Ma- nashville making some money for us and and hold it though and we're going to acquire more vehicles yeah it's just that our focus is not building a car business car rental business right but definitely get some cars for, for asset purposes but yeah go ahead. right most and if you need help navigating Toro, my man is very knowledgeable in Turo and knows the whole game knows the tips and the tricks of the trade yeah so hit him up if you're interested in getting cars on Turo and want some guidance for sure but either way um we do have a few cars on Turo, um but ultimately we by running a car rental business and recognizing that people are crazy out here um going through our own trials and tribulations with that oh my gosh can you believe she wrecked our car she did it she, she wrecked the the fuck the plug. out of our, she read the fuck out of our car committed insurance fraud and ran off on the plug like when we talked to our mentor about it he was like that was literally worst case worst scenario worst case scenario worst case scenario yeah um our <laughs> actually two months ago because this happened in like april mm-hmm. but two months ago her insurance company called me and they were looking for her so hey you about to get what's coming to you, girl. Yeah. About to get what's coming to you. For sure. But anyway, we learned from that experience. And the, I feel like the best thing that we took from that experience is the connections that we made. That's it. Because we got connected to another mentor who taught us the art of selling and the credit game. Mm-hmm. And that's when you started diving into that. And then we got connected to another mentor who taught us the art of hustling, which I want to talk about that, too, when we get into that. And then also we've had, we had another mentor. I forgot about Danielle who is teaching yeah. us about courses and <laughs> mm-hmm. I thought about starting my own course, but then I decided I wanted to turn it into a book instead. Yeah. And then another mentor who would helped us hire. Um, so along that journey, each mentor has taught us something very valuable and I don't want to miss that. Like, I feel like the year of 2023 was just that of new beginnings. 2022. Or that's what I meant. 2022 was the year of new beginnings, humble beginnings, Mm -hmm. um, investing into knowledge and experience more than absolutely anything. Mm -hmm. You okay, baby? She, our dog is crying. Hold on. Come here. Continue. Uh, And hold it. Make sure you hold it though. Are you holding it? I'm holding it. Okay. Uh, Because you're on to something good. I just want to make sure I hit on this. Like, yes, it's going to be some, people that's listening. You're going to either look at this from two perspectives. Y'all done spent 60, 70,000 just, you know, out here. What you doing? You sound like you're just all over the place. But then there's going to be the half of the other half of people that understands and that's get it. Get it. Like, we believe in ourselves so much yeah. that it's not even spending. We are making the, we're investing into ourselves the best and biggest investment that you can ever make in general is in yourself Mm -hmm. number one period you start with you first and you have to invest into 
to get in into these rooms get into the room we on we that is a value of us because when you get into these rooms it's really about relationship building you make connections Mm -hmm. you don't know who is going to be in these rooms but you make these connections that you can connect with one person that can truly literally change your life change the game you're literally one connection away from changing your life the question is are you willing to make the investment to get into these rooms and on top of that sometimes the lesson that you learn isn't going to be a positive one Mm -hmm. Mm. sometimes the lesson you learn is not going to be a positive one we definitely i wouldn't say negative experiences but more so life-changing experiences Mm -hmm. we had some life-changing experiences some huge revelations that changed the course of where we thought we were going drastically and i mean drastically so i want to dive into what we were talking about the other day okay and we were driving in the car and jamal and i we were reflecting over our 2022 and talking about the lessons that we learned and i said i feel like we suck at hustling (laughs) we need to be better hustlers and jamal combated me with that Um, and I want you to dive into that a little bit more before I give my rebuttal, but what what did you say, baby? I took it as a slap in the face. Like, what the, what the hell you mean? We bad hustlers. Like, look, we figuring it out. Like we, you, you see, I get, we get payments that hit our account every, every day. Like whether it be a small or it'd be like a a nice little chunk chain, you know, like when we, when there's urgent things that's coming up, we figure out ways to get it done and, you know, find solutions and stuff. So, like, how in the hell can you tell me that we suck at hustling? Like, we figuring it out. But it wasn't until you unpackaged what you really meant. And, um, yeah, so just kind of open it up. So. so, what I meant by that is that there's this guy that we know who is just this amazing hustler. Mm-hmm. Like, he has done so many things and figured out so many like loopholes where he can make some fast cash. And that's not us. We, we aren't great at manipulating the system in order to make some fast money. When it comes to making fast money, that is not our, that's not our agenda. And at first I thought of that as a negative thing because I'm thinking when you're in this entrepreneurial, entrepreneur journey, And, you know, things don't necessarily go the way that you plan them to. So you might find yourself in a predicament where you're like, damn, we need some money right right now. We need some money right now. So in my mind, I'm thinking we must suck at hustling because if we were hustlers, we'd be out here making this shit happen. We wouldn't be worried about where the money is going to come from because we already got a plan to make a thousand here, a thousand there, 10,000 over here. Like like we saw him doing like on the grind just doing whatever needs to be done in order to make it happen and jamal went into the conversation of but that's not what we value that's not who we are we don't want to just make a quick dollar and do by any means necessary the way that i see hustling is getting it done by any means necessary there's there's stipulations in that right so yeah talk about that you said in the shower they're like that's it the stipulation yeah i'm sorry i got like a piece of hair what the heck i feel like a piece of mayfur just got on my lip (laughs) okay any (laughs) she's so spoiled y'all see her y'all see this spoiled anyway but yeah so then we talked about the difference between hustling and building because we recognize that neither neither direction is a wrong direction to take like after having several conversations with this person that's that's what he feels like he needs to do that's what he feels like is right that's what where he grew up that's what people did they hustled and he's made the life that he's desired out of it so how can i sit up here and tell him that he's wrong Mm -hmm. And that's the beautiful thing about life is that there's no such thing as right or wrong. There's just whatever path that you take. And that encounter with this person made us recognize that the fast life, that hustling lifestyle, isn't what we truly want. 
nothing wrong with it. If that's your goal, then go get it. But we come from an environment where things are slower, where we're more buried in our roots, where we value deep connections with people. Because one argument this person made was that nobody cares about you. Because we were talking about selling and like the art of marketing ourselves. And he Mm -hmm. was saying, nobody cares about you. You know, no one cares about your story. People care about what you can do for them. And that's truth in that. It is truth in that because a lot of people think that way. But in our down south roots down here, we genuinely care about other people. Mm -hmm. Like you can't sit up here and tell us that that's true to us because we love the connections that we're building with our followers and with our friends and the people that actually look at our content and work with us. Like people, we really deeply impact people on a personal level, even if we're not personally talking to them. And I value that more than absolutely anything because we could get on our platforms and sell, 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 just tell you what we can do for you. But instead we get on our platforms and we just be ourselves. And if you find that you want to buy from us, mm-hmm. then buy from us. And we might not sell as much that way. Yeah. We really might not. We might not have as many followers or we may not make as much money. But we value the building process more than we value hustling. Mm-hmm. And the point that we were trying to make in that is that you can't do both. Either you're going to be in a season of hustling or you're going to be in a season of building, but what are you going to put your energy towards? And in 2023, we decided that our energy is going to be put towards building something rather than hustling and trying to make a quick dollar. Because even though money is not where we want it to be, how can we stay level headed and not panic and start going towards that hustling nature which will only take energy away from us actually building out our businesses. For sure. And the energy is building. Yes, 100%. We are in the frequency of building because that's what we value, getting the foundation right. But also that's attached to that is how we are building. Mm -hmm. That's what we recognize. And with this experience, back to when she said earlier, uh, we had a lot of highs. We had a, a lot of learning lessons. And that's all a part of the game of entrepreneurship when you're going on this journey. It's like a, when you make investments, there's going to be an investment that you make is going to end up with a positive return, whether it be financially, you know, you gain a lot of things. But there's going to be investments that you make that just teaches you a grand lesson. And that was one thing that we did not see coming. Like we went into this one thing, this investment, like, this was it like we felt really good about it but on the back end of it coming out of it it just took a turn Mm -hmm. it took a huge turn Mm -hmm. like it slapped us in the face like 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 it left us out in the cold butt booty naked freezing raining and it hurt it hurt so bad but what it taught us is yes it it may take us a little bit longer to get to the bad because of how we're getting to the bad due to what we truly value Mm -hmm. what the lesson the lesson that we learn amplify our values and there's a lesson in that you you truly won't really know what you value until you're on the other side of that experience and i'm very grateful for the experience that we had with this particular situation that we're talking about because what it amplified in us is that we truly value relationships mm-hmm. and getting the bag. There's people out here that are just so like get the bag, period. Mm-hmm. Like I'm only going to develop a relationship if you're going to help me. If you, if you can be a piece to my puzzle that's going to help me get to the bag that's in alignment with my goal. If you can't help me get to the bag, then there's no point of you being in my life. Yeah, and that's their right that's cool that doesn't make them wrong but it's just just their value but what we learned in this experience is that you know what we really value like getting to know people outside of just chasing the bag we really value like like that's really important to us you know everything is just not always about chasing the bag because you know we're going to spend a great deal of time building relationships it's more to just getting the bag in this lifetime and we had to go through that experience that I just really learned that we care about staying rooted and grounded, mm-hmm. you know, uh, we, and, and there is a thousand ways out here for us to get to the bag. Like we know that we can, like 
I know I'm a hustler. I know I can get it. And I do that shit every day. But it's all about how you go about it. Yeah. You don't want to lose yourself in the process of getting to the bag. And that's one thing that I, I, I give shouts out and kudos to, like, my upbringing, my pops, my grandfather, my dad. Man, pops, he, like, he, he put that in me. Mm-hmm. You know, value integrity, value your word, value um, people. You know, more than just that dollar bill. Like, I do not want to burn bridges. Mm-hmm. I that, that was one of the major learning lessons for me is that I'm not willing to burn bridges just to chase a bag. I, I don't think I'd be able to sleep well at night. Yeah. And that's, that's just me. And it may take us a little bit longer to get to the bag, like, compared to how other people are getting to the bag. But once we find our sweet spot, because long as it, long as we're being who we are in that process, we stand true to self. We're gonna figure out what works for us, and it's coming. It may just take us a little bit longer, but we're getting there. I know we're getting close because I can feel the pressure. Mm. I know we're getting close because I can really feel the pressure, and that's why I'm not stressing of trying to trying to step out of ourselves and do something that isn't in alignment with where we're trying to go. Mm-hmm. So we talked about this yesterday, this concept of what are people going to say at your funeral? A lot of people don't consider that piece when they build out their lives. They're so focused on the now. I got to get it now. I got to do like you're focused on the day to day rather than looking at the bigger picture, Mm -hmm. which is what we're focused on doing and how we're going to live our lives moving forward. We understand that we desire more than anything when we're dead and gone. And side note, have you accepted death? Have you made peace with the fact that you're going to die someday? Because a lot of people avoid that and therefore they don't take their lives seriously. Mm -hmm. But we take our day to day so seriously and what we're doing and the habits that we're doing and the people that we're talking to and just our mindset and our values we take that so seriously because we understand that we have a limited amount of time here so we want to capitalize off of every little moment we want to optimize every moment and make sure that it's taking us closer and closer to the image that we want to leave when we leave this earth so for us we desire for a packed out world it ain't finna be a funeral. I didn't say this before, but we gonna be trees. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, if I if you go first, just know you're gonna be in a tree. Okay. Ain't no ifs, ands, or buts. And if I go first, I'm gonna be mad. I'm gonna haunt you if you don't put me in a tree. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> I want to go back to life. Don't put me in no freaking coffin. Right. Anyway. Love it. Um, I w- I desire for people to gather around my tree. And just tell stories of how I've impacted their lives. I don't want no choir singing, no sermon or nothing. I just want you to talk about the things that I did to change your life. Mm -hmm. Because that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to impact you. I'm here to impact everyone. I'm here to experience as much life as I possibly can. The highs, the lows, the good, the bad the pretty the ugly all of it that's what my soul is here to do is to experience it all before i leave this earth therefore what i want to leave is the legacy of the life that i experience right so when you're making these decisions about how you decide to carry forward in your life especially entrepreneurs out there like you have to make the decision of how you're going to run your business because you will be tested you will be tested because that that fast life is real appealing. It's very appealing. It's real sexy. Mm. We lived it. We lived we, it. We got a taste of it. It tasted really good. Mm, it did. It surely did. But at the end of the day, if we get there and we don't have the relationships to show for it, and the genuine relationships, not just people that we help make money, but if we don't have the, re- the genuine relationships to show for it, then what is it worth? Mm-hmm. I know I don't know about you, but I desire to just we're gonna have so many friends. Yeah. We're gonna have so many like genuine friends. And you know, not even yeah, we're gonna have so many friends, but 
maybe not so many, but we're going to have quite a few quality right. built relationships, you know, and to add on to that, everything you're saying, like, I'm in straight alignment with that. I realized that more than money, and I'm saying this, I, I value money. To me, money is not the root of all evil. It's not. It's what the, people do with it. It's the it's what people do with it, but also it's the lack of money. Mm. In my opinion, it's the root of all evil. But like we we are on the way to to being in that millionaire status, and it's because what we can do with it is it creates more opportunity options mm-hmm. experiences that we'll be able to do for ourselves but freedom. also freedom time freedom that we're mm-hmm. going to get back and then if you live in the united states of america the way to go about doing so you you, you got to get that back you got to you got to control you got to control the narrative you mm-hmm. know of your life you got to get that back so but what i value over that though is building genuine relationships with people i care more about what people say about me when i'm not in the room and how do you can control that there's there's a lot of things that you cannot control but when you are interacting with people the question that i'm always asking myself is what seed are you planting in, inside of people every time that you have an experience with people mm-hmm. You know, that that is my goal every time I have an interaction with somebody. My goal is to leave a seed, a positive seed in their life in some way, shape, or form. So when they go off, when they go into their their natural life, they be thinking think about me like, man, like he was a he was he was a good dude. He's a good solid dude. And they're gonna and that's forever. That's gonna follow them forever. Mm-hmm. And when I when I'm dead and gone, when I pass away, they're gonna remember those experiences they had with me. In my opinion, that's true wealth. Yeah. That is real, true wealth to me, and that's what I'm cultivating. That's what I'm dedicating my life outside of what we have going on intimately, you know, intimacy and personally in our family, but out, you know, when it comes to to people. Yeah. Like, um, when people come to our funeral, how are we gonna be building that up? It's gonna be so many people just telling stories. Like they're gonna feel indebted to come because, like, man, like he truly and she truly, truly impacted our life. Yeah. So that's what it's about at the end of the day. And I w- there is no bag that's big enough for me that's going to make me compromise on that. I agree. So I want to pass this on to you guys that the download that I got yesterday from my higher self is that the theme of the year is build. And that doesn't necessarily mean that you don't build any other year or whatever, but that build should be your focus when you're making your decisions, where when you're figuring out what to value, which turn to take, where to invest your time, money, and energy, think mm-hmm. about if it is going to aid in that journey of building. Mm-hmm. Focus on building. The reaping will come. The reaping will come. It will definitely come. But do you want to reap now on shaky foundation? That was a good one. Do do you want to reap now on shaky foundation? Or do you want to wait? And we are in the season of it is really tempting. We would love to reap now, even though the foundation isn't built. It's very tempting. We would love to reap now. But what's more important? Mm -hmm. If we reap now, then we are we are stealing from our foundation yep our future self is going to appreciate the patience and uh just the patience that we're you know choosing right now Mm -hmm. we are working while we are waiting that's what we're doing right now and we are welcoming the trials and tribulations that's coming and you said it and i look at every trial and tribulation that comes it's a test and it's also a sign that we're getting closer and closer to the vision that we have in our mind, to our dreams and our goals. How long, like, success is going to test you. Mm-hmm. It's, it's continually going to test you to see if you're really about what you say that you want. You say, you say you want these big, grand things, and you want this certain lifestyle, you want this these certain genuine relationships, but I need for you to, to pass these tests because these tests – is what's going to give you the lesson and the experiences that you're going to be able to take along with you. But if you fail, if you stop, 
if you fail the test, meaning if you quit on yourself, you're not going to get what you asked for. So mm -hmm. I'm just literally preparing you for what you're asking for. You just don't know the how you're going to get about it. But just faith, that whole faith thing, that faith and action, that's a real thing. It's a, you have to continuously, daily bank on your faith and trust your higher source, source energy, that whatever the trials and tribulation, a.k.a. learning lessons, these experiences, a.k.a. these opportunities mm -hmm. that's presented in front of you, it's for your betterment. Mm -hmm. And you have to choose to see, you have to choose to bank on that perspective every day instead of playing the victim role. Like, dang, here's another thing. Why am I, why is this not working out? Maybe this wasn't meant for me. No. Thank you, God. Thank you for this trial tribulation because I'm going to learn this mug. Mm -hmm. And then when I overcome this shit, I'm better. And I'm going to be able to take this experience with me for the rest of my life. I want to share a transparent moment with you guys because I want you guys to see a, an inside of what we're going through so that you know that you're not alone and that things aren't always peaches and cream, mm -hmm. but also hear it now as our testimony. We are in, we are in the process of writing our testimony right now is that I know that we are close. I know that we are close because more than ever, more than ever, I have been entertaining the idea of going back to a job. Mm -hmm. And I've even been offered a job opportunity that just came out of no, like literally came out of the middle of nowhere, middle of nowhere. And it was a very, very tempting job offer because it was a job that I wanted before I decided to leave my teaching job. It's another teaching job that doesn't require me to have a certification. And the only reason why I quit my job when I did is because I had to get a certification in order to teach the next year, mm -hmm. which required me to get my master's, which I wasn't finna do. So this job, the one that I really wanted, just fell out of the air. Mm -hmm. And you can't tell me that that's not God. You can't tell me that he did not put that in my face. He, she, it did not put that in my face to try to distract me, to ask me if this entrepreneur lifestyle is really what I want. Mm. You cannot tell me that that wasn't a test. And I could have easily accepted. There was a sign-on bonus and everything, y'all. Mm. Benefits. I could have got $2,000 a hand right now. But I had to sit down and ask myself, is this going to help me? in the direction that I desire for my life, my business, our family. And even though it's so tempting, cause I could reap right now, I could get that right now. But then I thought about it. I'm gonna have to be there at 8 a.m. 7.30 for real, seven o'clock, 7.30 every morning. I won't leave until four. It's 30 minutes away. What? When am I gonna be able to go to the gym? It takes about an hour, an hour 45, honestly, because it's an hour 15 gym and then you have to drive back and forth, get ready. When am I going to have time to work on my business? Mm -hmm. When am I going to have time to travel, be a public speaker? When am I going to have time to do that? Mm -hmm. So I had to ask myself, is this, is this money? Is this, is this chump change? Honestly, because compared to where we're going, it's still not enough. Yeah. Am I about to sacrifice 40 hours a week of my life for money that's not even enough? You willing to sell that soul? So I say that to say, things are going to tempt you. It's going to tempt you real. Like, it's going to look good. It's going to look like it's a sign from the universe. But in actuality, it's a test. It's mm -hmm. a test if you're going to settle or if you're going to be patient for what you truly ask for. Mm. Moment of silence on that. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's some real shit, baby. Temptation, Temptation is real. Like, success. I, I look at success as this person that's just standing over the corner just watching like this. Mm. Let me let me throw this. Let me throw this obstacle real quick. Let mm -hmm. me see. All right, let me see how let me see how she gonna do. Let me see how he gonna do. Uh, I see you. Okay, 
You you overcame it. All right. Let me throw this temptation. Let me throw this temptation right here. Ooh, that's going to hit them hard right there. That's going to get them because they know they it, it, it can help them out real nice right now. Mm-hmm. And it almost it almost got him. Mm-hmm. It almost got him. Ooh, fly. Don't bother us. <laughs> Shoe fly. But yeah, it almost got us. But it's another opportunity for us to get more creative. Mm-hmm. And, and that's that's what, and that's what we're doing here. It's how you choose it. It's what perspective you are choosing to see every obstacle and opportunity, every temptation that comes. Mm-hmm. That's why it's very important for you to get super clarity on where you're going, why you're doing what you're doing, and your foundation. Foundation building is important. Like get super, super clear on what you're doing. What, what will it, I need help with formulating this question. Like, what are you like willing to give up? Mm-hmm. What's going to make you give up on your dream? What's going to make you deviate from the plan? What's going to make you go a different route from what you originally planned out to, to do? Mm-hmm. What's going to make you sell your soul and go back? I, can't, I honestly, I can't even imagine a life where we go back. Because mm-hmm. I was sitting there in bed, like crying last night, like thinking about our financial situation, thinking about what the hell are we going to do? Do I need to go back to a job? And damn, do I want to give up? Like I entertained them thoughts, but then I imagined a life where I gave up. And I was like, girl, you know that's not possible. Mm. Like either you go through this or you go through this because you can't give up. You're going to live the rest of your life pissed off, disappointed, mad because you decided to settle. Mm-hmm. So all you can do is go through it. It has to work. Or it has to mother work, period. Yep. Energy all 2023. Play with us. Has to work or it has to work. Play with us. And we're going to get more creative than ever. Mm-hmm. And it's level up season. How bad you really how bad you really want your dream? How bad you want it? I'm excited. I'm excited too. I'm excited to listen back to this podcast at the end of 2023. Yeah. And just to see how far that we've come because I just I really feel like I just have this itching feeling and y'all going to see it unfold. But I just have this itching feeling that even though we're going to be building, even though we're going to be learning, we finna be making some bread in the process. Facts. Like, I'm getting tired of learning and building without no bread. Okay? Yeah. I'm hungry. We're yeah. gonna eat. <laughs> this year we're gonna eat. For sure. And it, and it's coming, you know, and it's that's it. That's what's going to happen. Yep. And for those that are listening, make sure that you respect the season that you're in. Yep. Give the proper respect, the, the lows, and... Be graceful and grateful for any and every experience that you endure because the moment you tell yourself yes to your dreams and goals, you don't know what's coming yeah. from that yes you said. That's why you got to make sure that even though the emotion left from the decision that you initially made, it's, it's the emotion is not there anymore, you got to make sure that you stand firm and true on the decision and what you said to yourself. Mm-hmm. So you got to literally tell yourself there is nothing that can be thrown in my path that's going to make me renege on my dream. And that's what we're standing on right now. Yep. That's the energy. And also, as we was talking, I, I wanted to make sure I say this too. It's a very, it's beautiful that we are going through this together. And one major learning lesson of 22, 2022 calendar year that I learned is that what's more important here, and I learned the importance through just our experiences together, which is, Making sure that you do everything in your power to stay on the same team with your mm. partner. <laughs> value that more than your dream. Like value that more than like the the hustle, like the goals and the dreams and stuff. Like it's 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 a pros and con- no, it's really all pros. The fact that I have a partner, we have each other to, to deal with each other. Mm-hmm. But what but you what you don't see starting off is that there's gonna be times where we're like, not on the same. We're not on the same page. We're not on the same team. It's gonna be things that touch you. It's gonna be things that just like make you want to like think twice about this person you with. God dog, baby. 
Hey, for real? You sing your verses on me? You know. We both be feeling that way sometimes. Like, where we want to just want to be at each other's neck. But don't miss the point that I'm making. <laughs> you trying to distract what Look, you just that, said. That's some, no, that's some real think. shit. And I'm not going to take back what I said. But here's the thing. I've, I've committed to you. I've committed my life to you. I'm not going nowhere. But we have to be real about the emotions that are evoked through these trying times. You piss me off, yeah, but... I, I know I ain't going nowhere. Right. I've never second guessed that. Don't don't miss the don't miss the point I'm making. What I'm saying is what I've learned through these experiences because not only we're being full time entrepreneurs, I'm also just learning how to be a better man, how to be a better partner in these relationships. Because in previous relationships and f- with previous women, I be I be quick to like act on emotions and and be like like but no nah, this is also a trying time for me to learn and grow and develop better as a man in this process and i appreciate all the experiences that this journey has taught me which is protect the safe space that you are you have created and continue to create with your with your your god your goddess at all costs protect that more than anything the security and safety and communication and also how you communicate with your partner partner is what truly matters during this journey and when you make and when y'all make sure y'all do whatever to stay on that same team, no matter what, there's nothing that can happen that can throw you off. Now that I'm on the other side of all of this, that is the energy and mindset that I'm on going forward. Right. So yeah. And just adding on top of that, that the decision that you make in your partner is one of the most crucial decisions mm-hmm. ever, but especially when you are in the middle of chasing your dreams, because that is a very sensitive time in your life. It's very sensitive seasons in your life because when you're chasing your dream, it's up and down, up and down drastically. And if you have a partner who's very up and down and up and down drastically, it just makes the whole experience even more confusing and painful and turbulent and stressful. But if you have a partner that's steady, Mm -hmm. if you know that you and your partner are solid, then it's going to make those highs and lows of you chasing your dream more stable and a little bit more easy to endure. Like yesterday, when we were going through the trials and tribulations of discussing our finances, at first we weren't on the same team and we were going at each other's necks about it. And blaming the other person and talking about what the other person can do in order to help our situation. And that only made the situation worse. Mm -hmm. Because now we're not even coming to a logical conclusion that's the best for us and our family in order to move forward. We're just saying whatever we feel like is going to hurt the other person. Mm -hmm. But when you're on the same team and you're having those tough conversations like that, those sensitive conversations... It just makes it even better because you're able to come up with more logical, more valuable conclusions Mm -hmm. because you understand that both of you are on the same page and have the same goal in mind rather than going at each other's throat and getting defensive. 100%. And the lesson that I learned out of that, and as we're continuously going through stuff, we're going to be continuously (laughs) working (laughs) on, you know, working on our relationship, but... The beauty, the beautiful thing that I got out of the experience is that it reminded me that I should, I need to always be keeping the end goal in mind in everything that I do. And with this particular situation is my relationship with you. Mm-hmm. I have to understand that, like, going forward, I got to be very aware of not only just communicating, but how I communicate to you. If I'm continuously keeping the end goal in mind, I'm going to be, I'm going to think twice before I speak. Mm-hmm. I'm going to always think twice before I speak because I can literally say something temporarily right now that'll make me feel good, make me feel like I won that battle, but you may walk away from that battle de- defeated and feeling rebellious of, of me and feeling like just some all these negative emotions. And yeah, I may be feeling like, yeah, I got I got off my chest what I said and I feel good, but that's that is hurting the longevity of our relationship. It's a it's a withdrawal from the relationship. It's not a deposit. Mm-hmm. And when you're continuously making withdrawals from the relationship and how you communicate, it's only a matter of time when the relationship is going to fail. 
Mm-hmm. So that was a huge learning lesson for me, keeping the end goal in mind. Continuously be making deposits. Be mindful of how you communicate. So wrapping this up, mm-hmm. let's recap real fast. The goal of this year or the focus of the focus. That was the word that I've been looking for all damn podcast. Focus. Focus. The focus of this year should be on where you are putting your energy, where you are putting your time and your effort and your investments, making sure that you're investing into the right people, getting clear on what it is that you value and only making decisions towards that, focusing on building the right foundation for whatever it is that you're building in order to get to whatever it is that you desire in Mm -hmm. your life. But what's more important to you? The big question here is what is the most important to you? Mm-hmm. So, baby, you want to take us out? Yeah, let's take us out. <laughs> um, this podcast episode is it is sponsored by Manifested. Period. Go ahead and tell them a little bit about Manifested. Period. What we got going on with this thing? Y'all can see this on the table, <laughs> and y'all have seen it everywhere. I know you have. Manifested. Period is still in the game. Mm-hmm. You can head over manifestedperiod.com dot com, and you can cop this sweatshirt. I got the beautiful gold embroidery now. Ah, mm-hmm. oh, it's so beautiful. And then it also comes in sweatpants, so you can get some matching sweatpants with that. But Manifested. Period. Forever. It is popping. That's. Also, another one of my focuses this year is just getting back into alignment because there was a time where I was tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and I swear I got everything that I wanted. But because life has gotten in the way, I've steered, I've strayed away from my goddess energy, my ultimate goddess energy. So Mm -hmm. that is also a theme of the year is getting back to my power. Mm -hmm. I want my power more than anything. Mm -hmm. And you have your power. You have it. You're right, baby. You have your power, baby. And also, just to throw this out there as well, y'all see it. J. Sco Capital is a real thing out here. Bro, I got clients. I have paid clients that's, that believes in me, and I'm getting results. And I'm and I'm in the process of, like, grinding and acquiring more results. So if you need your credit repair and also build, reach out to me. I realize that I'm, I don't – credit repair is not what I do. Mm-mm. Is I help people achieve their dreams and goals, and I understand that uh, a crucial piece in that process is getting your credit fixed because credit is a huge piece of your life, and it can place limitations on what you have access to. Mm-hmm. That is what I do. I help people take their limitations off and get access to uh, the vehicle that's going to allow them help them achieve their dreams and goals. That's what I do. So if you need help in that process and that involves credit, reach out to me. I'm inspired. I'm focused and passionate on helping you get to that, like, real talk. Y'all, this man goes to the post office damn near every uh, every day. Every day the post office yep. is open. He is there sending off letters, attacking these credit bureaus to get his clients the results that he promised that he would. Now, today he had a consultation with this person who had the most beautiful testimony the most beautiful story and she was talking about how her credit situation is holding her back from making the steps that she needs in order to impact hundreds of thousands of people so she can't get to her goals she can't get in front of the people that she needs to unless she fix her credit Mm. that's beautiful that hit different you out here making dreams come true yeah that's and i'm honored to come on y'all like what Mm-hmm. This ain't credit repair. Like it's it's bigger than credit repair. Yeah. And I'm just leaving it at that. So that's I'm excited about what I do. I'm glad, baby. Yeah. Because you're doing something amazing. Thank you, baby. So let's wrap this up. All right. Well, you know where to find us. Black and Abundant now has an Instagram and a TikTok. So yes, sir. follow us on Instagram at Black Abundant. No and because whoever owns Black and Abundant. Go over there and cuss them out in their DMs because they don't even use the page. Y'all know y'all wrong. Don't even use the page. God, damn. But, you know, whatever. I even asked them for it, and they're like, no, we're going to use it. So anyway, anyway, way, Black Abundant on Instagram and Black and Abundant on TikTok. <laughs> and you can head over to blackandabundant.com. You can cop merch. You can cop this mug. We got sweatshirts. This hat that Jamal got on right now. Like, 
Black and Abundant merch. Get it. Fire. Um, Let's get it. Also, make sure that you follow us at By Nia Love and at Jaysco, the producer. Jamal also has a TikTok for his credit repair business that, you know, Love Marketing is revamping and getting together, which will be dropping very, very soon. So follow him on TikTok at Jaysco Capital. Mm-hmm. Is there anything else? I think that's yeah, it. Yeah. Um, you fine as a mother, baby. God damn. I just want to well, let her wrap this up. You don't you feed know. me. Yeah. What, what you hungry. want? I got you, baby. Take okay. me some more. <sighs> All them girls we got in the fridge. We need, we got that. I'll whip you up some. We can make some seafood. And what I mean by seafood, whatever you see in the refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this has been an episode of Black and Abundant. We love you guys, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Boom. Mm. Mm. Mm.